All right, everybody, we appreciate you being here. And um, for those of you that we have some, some folks I invited on uh, Facebook, some guests to come and just to be on the webinar with us if they wanted to. And uh, thought it might be good for some of you guys to learn some stuff that we're doing and the type of things that we're doing and involved in. I thought, well, it might be good if uh, some of you guys get that stuff and learn from it. And uh, we have a lot of good things going on right now. I am, uh, I've been offering folks on Facebook $2,000 if they find a house, we buy it and flip it, and then would still have some of you guys actually be the finders and uh, work with them. But trying to up our game a little bit, we've got um, right now we're ready to get several. It's our it's our time to buy our winter houses. It would be nice if we had about 10 houses right now, and so. Um, trying to get everybody motivated and see if I can't get some folks sending me some new information and open up some new markets. And then uh, if it's in a market where you guys are in an area, I know some of you have already gotten calls from me where I've said, hey, I help this person out or hey, you know, get this person. If they come across some information, check out what they're doing. Uh, kind of making bird dogs for you guys that are on the team. Uh, if you're one of the folks that are on uh, the, the call because I did the Facebook thing, you are uh, Welcome to be here, and hopefully uh, you can be a good asset to us uh, for you to make some money and us. But I thought it'd be fun for you guys just to kind of see what our webinars are and and uh, what we do for our team. And so I wanted to go through and and talk tonight about uh, stopping points, how to know when uh, the deal is actually no longer really uh, a, a good deal, and a lot of people uh, don't know when a deal is a good deal and what makes a good deal and I think that's really important uh, to know is to uh, to get the, the truth about a deal and get to the end of a deal and a lot of times um, unfortunately uh, I guess the easiest way to say it when you're looking at um, deals Realtors tend to sometimes give you things that they would see as deals or um, that would just make them some money. And I'll explain that. We'll get that here in a, a little bit. But I just want to this I want to give you some information on the stopping point. It it is as important to know when it's not a deal as it is to know when it is a deal. Now, I know that sounds really funny, but it is it is just as important to know that the house is a good deal right away. Or not, but here's what happens. And I and 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 some of you new people, and some of you people even on Facebook, I, I know, you will drive to a home, look at it, see it, check it out, and and uh, try to make a decision on the home up front. Um, many times we make offers. I think I made 27 this morning, 28, 28 this morning, and we make offers. I don't have a clue anything about the houses. I do a percentage thing. I try to put a little bit in for repairs and clean up. I look at the pictures. It takes me about maybe three minutes a house, uh, sometimes 30 seconds a house if it's rough enough or if it's really nice. And I just spin through make offers, tag my realtor on things that I, I wrote. Sometimes I put it on my notes in my phone. Then I copy and paste it to an email and send it to a realtor. Um, and it usually looks like, um, let's give an MLS number 076431 and then it'll say 28K, 48K, 105K, 250K beside it and they know that's the, the offer um, to write. So that is um, what I'm doing is I'm not spending a lot of time on finding out if the deal is a deal or not. I'm not spending so much time trying to look at individual deals as I am is getting to all of the deals and I found a lot of times people spend so much time on one deal looking at one deal and trying to figure out if it is or is not a deal that they miss hundreds of deals so let me give you an example in Savannah uh, on Monday uh, hold on one second here and look on my other ones so in Savannah on Monday um, there were 17 new houses. Six of them went under contract. So if you were looking at one house and you saw it and then you drove to it and then you looked at it and then you drove back. Now I live a, an hour from Savannah. so um, But you drove back and you go back and forth. 
Now you've looked at it, you come home, you try to figure out what it needed, carpet and the whole thing. You've got one house done. That means on Monday of this week, you'd have missed six deals. On Tuesday, there was 11 new ones and four sold and one I went under contract and one of the ones on Monday went under contract. So then if you started calling me or trying to get a hold of me and showing me the deal or emailing me and then waiting on me to email you back, then you missed five more deals on Tuesday. So you better be careful of your market of knowing is a deal not a deal and move on. What's funny is, is I just about, definitely in uh, South Carolina, definitely in uh, North Carolina, I actually run out of offers. I make so many offers in so many of the cities that I'm working, I actually run out of offers. Now, Brandon and I are sharing uh, Savannah, so that's a little unfair in the point that we share Savannah a little bit, but that's what it is. So let's, let's try to figure out what these are, and I'll go through these, and hopefully this gives you some instructions. Now that I've kind of explained the problem is you, you want to get to the deals. You want to look at houses very fast and move on, and that, that should be the go is just look at it and move on. Know your profit when you buy. And this is something, by the way, we, we do as our team. We know our profit when we buy. We know where we're going to be. And I'm not saying you can't fix un unforeseen things you can't fix. But I'm talking about the average, everyday items that you see, carpet, the things you can see. You should know what your profit is pretty much when you buy. And most of the time, that's the way it is. We have one house right now uh, in Virginia. It's going to be our first house to not do good. It, it may be my first loser. And I know that's hard to believe. We've done a lot of houses. We've always made money, but this one may literally may be my first loser uh, that I've ever had. I've had houses make very little money. I've had a couple of houses. I didn't make any money, and only my investors and finders made money. But um, I, I've, I've never had one lose money, and this may be my first time. And maybe not. We may still do good and still make it by five or $6,000. But um, the market just fell out. It went completely backwards. And that's just going to happen sometimes. We had the house for a year. It took us a while to get it up, then try to get an offer on it. And in that meantime, it just kept going down. And uh, when, I, when a market loses $20,000 a year, it's a rough market. And it just happens. There's no way to know it happens. There's no reason for it. Uh, military are moving in the area. There's all kinds of things there. The, the subdivision is beautiful. But most of the time, when we buy a house, I know the profit. I know what I'm going to do with it. Um, what I can do with it, and if I don't know or I can't figure out a plan to do with the house, how I want to do it, it's a stopping point for me. I, I, I need to move on because I can't do the, 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 the profit. Work out the kinks and inspections, not in cost. And this is important. For those of you that are working with me, there's times I'll do an inspection on the house, I'll pay for an inspection on the house, and I absolutely hate it because for me, unless I buy the house, it's a loser. So if I have five inspections last week and they were 300 bucks a piece, that's $1,500 in inspections to try to buy five houses. And if I don't like any of the inspections or they won't come down the price at all and we can't still make the profit, then I've got to back out. I lose the inspection money. Absolutely miserable. So I pretty much want to know that we're getting a house before. that We're, we're so sure we're going to buy it. I'm here a couple of weeks ago. We did one. I was totally sure we're going to buy it. Felt comfortable with the house. I thought, man, this is this is going to be a good one until we got everything from the inspection and then we realized, okay, and we went back and offered them so low and the bank just said, no way. That bank, I think, even lowered their price like 15000 or something and I still said, no way, because we couldn't do it for what needed to be done underneath the house and the problems of the house. Work out the kinks, the inspections, not, well, I've got some profit in here and if i got to fix that, when that's when you really get in trouble and there's a, it's a hard time to fix it. Have your plan from the time you find it till the closing of the sale. When we, we, we've got to have a plan on everything. From, from when we find a house that day, we should start setting in motion a plan to the day we sell the house as we are the owners and we've sold it and getting our profit. We have a plan. It might be a plan that uh, right now we usually keep houses from now to spring. So right now we're looking at about a four-month loop, maybe a five-month loop, uh, to get the house ready to sell. It's going to take us, if we bought a house today, a lot of times it's going to take us about 30 days to close. So right now we're in what, October? So uh, beginning or middle of November, we're going to own the house. We're going to start fixing it up November, part of December with all the Christmas stuff, into January, ready to put the house on the market in February, we're going to sell it in March. A lot of times that's the way it happens over the winter. 
Um, so your houses have to be a little bit more profitable. That means we have a plan from the time we buy the house saying this is it. When we find it, we immediately start working the plan and discussing the plan. And that's your job with me. Everybody that's on our team is for us to go back and forth and make sure our plan is good and we know it will work. It, it, it is hugely important for you guys to have that plan up front, ready to go, knowing what you want, knowing what you need, uh, and, and then we, of course, uh, make, make that uh, work out. Then, let no one change your mind that doesn't have success. This is, some of you guys are having trouble with real, realtors. And uh, I get tickled at that. I'm married to a realtor. She's the smartest realtor I've ever met. And not because she was my wife. She was my realtor before she was my wife. And she's, she's brilliant. She's good at what she does. Um, she takes care of her clients. She makes sure they're, they're, they're handled correctly. She's a fabulous realtor. But um, if you're not if you're not you're not careful, they'll talk you out of what you do. I've had a lot of team members quit looking because some realtor that's never done a house in their life says, "Oh, you just can't buy them for that." But I eat and I make a living, and it's not true. And so I, I think we've got to get where you're listening to the right person, not someone who's not had any success or not done anything, because if you're not careful, there's two things that will happen with that. If you've decided not to buy, don't let a realtor talk you into a house. And if you've decided to buy, don't let a realtor talk you out. Make sure you're keeping your mind that you know where the point is to stop or go. It's very important. And I always say this, listen to real investors. If the realtor is not an investor, ask him questions, ask him questions, ask him questions. How many houses have you flipped? Well, I've got a guy that I've sold seven houses to he's flipped. That wasn't my question. How many houses have you flipped? Listen, this is, this is a weird thing. I was just reading about this week, and I'm going to try to do some research on it. But they, they feel like people who got in flipping houses last year, over 75% of them lost money. We have somebody that's on our team. They decided they want to go flip houses on their own. I'm all for it. It doesn't bother me. I hope you do. I wish you success. If you want to go do it, I'm all for it. Not a problem. But they said, we think your um, numbers are just too far skewed. We're not going to do it that way okay with me, not my money, not my investor's money, doesn't bother me. They went and did it and lost money. Then they did it again and lost money. And you know, three, four more of those successful uh, rates and they're going to be in trouble. What you need to do is learn how to do this, find out what to do the right way, and then mimic what works. Some of you guys that want to go do this on your own, I want to see you mimic what works and, and follow through with that program. And, and I'm all for, we have several people um, on, on our team, um, that, that we're you know we, we try to work with uh, that can can start doing uh, what we do and uh, do it how we do it you know um, we've got a guy on our team uh, named JW I don't know if he's on here but uh, they he is super interested in flipping houses and I told him do some with me learn how to do it uh, I don't see him oh he is on here um, hey JW but um, learn how to do it and do it with me and you get good at it go do it on your own I, I'm I'm so super for that, but make sure you're really immersed in what you're doing and know it, and quit listening to people who don't know what they're doing. I talked to two people this week, and I thought it was really funny. So one guy we ate lunch with, and he's like, I want to talk to you. I'd like to get together and sit down and talk with you. Uh, he's uh, Ken, my, my pastor here. I'd like to talk to you. Man, I'd like to get back in this. I'd like to be doing some flipping houses, and I'd like to speak with you. Then I had another guy stand in the store today, and he was picking something out of a magazine. I was miserably bored behind this guy. And the guy beside me he just started chit-chatting, talking, and he says, uh, what are you doing? And I said, this is my farm. And, oh, he moved to Georgia, and we talked. We had like 15 minutes, no kidding. And it got around to, well, what do you do? And I said, I flip houses. Oh, oh, I feel sorry for you. And I thought, you know, never judge a man by his cover because I was there in shorts and a T-shirt probably. And uh, But I just thought, you know, if I had a choice, I'd probably choose, I don't know him, but I'd probably choose my pocketbook over your pocketbook. Because uh, what I know and how I know to do things is not how he knows. He went to some class somewhere, so he said, you can do this with no money, and you can do it, and he's, and he's lost his butt by putting his money up. And then, listen, the worst thing in the world you can do if you've saved up two, three hundred thousand dollars is go put $150,000 in a house that's worth two fifty. dollars and end up spending two fifty to fix it and be out another hundred thousand dollars and then have to sell it for two thirty or two twenty. What? Call you Kenneth. Or, or call you Kenneth. Kenneth DeBose. 
my dad bought a little house. Where was that? In Arkansas, right? He bought a little house in Arkansas or something. And the time he got done, I think he had to, he lost like sixty dollars or something. And he, and he worked for like weeks or maybe even a month. I don't know. He cracks me up sometimes. Now I don't think he would do that. Now he had, he learned a lot of good lessons, and I hope he doesn't make the Taj Mahal anymore. But um, you got to be careful of how you're doing it that you don't lose what you did save up. The best way is follow it with with a plan and make a plan work. Then. Follow your mind, not your heart. Everybody listen, this is huge important. Follow your mind and not your heart. Stop falling in love with places. Oh, that's the greatest house ever. I love this house. Oh, come on. Let it go. Follow your mind. Your mind has, has rules and things set up, stuff that I've taught you. Follow your mind. Don't get all excited about any project, whether it's a house or it's a commercial real estate, whatever it is. Um, we're not ready to jump in until we know what's good and what's real. Real estate's not for the weak at heart, let me tell you. So some of you guys, first I want to do is season you and get you strong where you're good at it. I don't care if you don't know anything. I don't care if you you feel like I don't have any. Now, some of you have renovated houses. You've done some stuff. But you say, when it comes down to this investment thing, I really don't know about it. I'm all for that. It's, it's, it's our investors and our money. I'll protect the money, and I'll protect the house, and you're safe. Let's do this and get going. The worst case scenario is you got schooled on a house, you learned what to do, but you didn't learn to lose a penny. You may have lost some time, but you didn't uh, lose a penny. I, I live in the middle of nowhere, and right now it sounds like a helicopter is landing in my backyard. They must need a place to land. All right, my backyard's 60 acres, so it's got plenty of room. Um, we don't hear that very often, but I feel like maybe we're at war. I, I don't know. Um, baby, go check it out. I'll pray for you. Okay. Um, and that's the spiritual side of me, of course, not the manly side. Um, but if, if, if you're weak at heart about it and you've not made your plan good and stuck with your plan and do what you're supposed to do and you crash, you hurt your family. And I see it time and time again. So, and, and a lot of times the reason they do that is, is they get following their heart so much and they get sappy. Uh, me and Tiffany call it schmoopy from, what's it from? Seinfeld, schmoopy. No, you're schmoopy. Um, but don't, it's not for the weak of heart. Never put your family in jeopardy. Never put you feeding your family over you know, a, a job over your fun job. This is a great job. I don't think anybody ought to quit their job tomorrow and start just doing real estate if this is your first time to start doing it. I don't think you quit your job because you've got to eat. you got to feed your kids you, if you have kids. Or you're going to have kids. you got to feed the woman that's going to have the kids. Something, you know. Uh, don't don't put never put feeding job over your fun job. I, I think that's uh, important. And and this is for me. Never put real estate before important family. I'm not saying you might miss a ball game or something, but I think important things that you set up to do with your husband, or your wife, your children are important. And when real estate with me starts taking the place of them, I think you're doing the wrong thing. I think that's a stopping point. That was free, by the way. That was just like you didn't have to pay for that. So here's the biggest problems of getting to the real deals and finding out what we can do to structure them. Houses is uh, the first thing we're going to talk about, and I don't think we'll get to commercial this week, but maybe the week after next uh, we, can, we can try to, to get to it. Um, we must get the deals in front of our eyes. The, 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 the biggest problem that I see is that you guys are on my team. You are not looking at enough deals. Um, a couple days ago I had 67 houses that were printed out by my realtor and brought to me and I sat here and went through page after page after page after page going through the deals that she brought me uh, here in the Savannah area. And the reason is I want to find out if something is a deal or not a deal and I've got to get it in front of my eyes. Now I get to be a little more aggressive. You've got to realize I don't have a finder here, right? So I'm already gaining 15% back out of the profit itself. So I don't have a finder. Well, I have Tiffany the finder. Maybe she takes a 15%. I don't know. Um, so I, when I look at deals here, I'll look at a little bit different deals than what you guys are looking at. Meets the same criteria on the investor side, but I got 15% more profit to work out. I'll often take that off the price of the house to be able to turn and make the same profit I would if I had you guys as a deal finder. Um, but make sure you're getting those deals in front of your eyes. Uh, you're, you're seeing them all the time. That you're finding the houses, you're looking at them. I probably look at 250 houses a day. But if you're looking at 10, you're getting a good start. But you ought to be looking at 20 or 30. So you ought to be trying to be aggressive. Work many realtors to send the deals. Don't just have one realtor in one town. Work four or five towns. Do your research. Find the towns you want to go to and work those 
markets. I'm working several markets right now. Work those markets to try to get the deals to be done in those markets where you can. Um, get them to send you REOs. You need REOs. I don't. I just. I mean, short sales right now are okay. We can do short sales. I'm fine with it. But REOs are our best. Our best money and where the best deals are are, are found. Short sales right now. I'll put offer in on any short sale at any price. Um, because I think if we get a chance to buy it and it takes us six months to buy it, it'll be okay. Right now, I'd offer on every short sale I could get my hands on um, and offer really low because you're going to have to wait for two months for the bank to answer anyway, and we're going to be over the winter for that. The, the offers are going to stop, and you got a lot. This is the best time right now for short sales because a lot of people aren't buying houses during this time of year, so it's a really good time to go in there. But mainly, I like REOs. I'm, just not, I'm not afraid to short short sales, so make sure you tell some of your realtors, hey, we'll do short sales. You send me the short sales and we'll look at them. We're going to do it exactly the same way. So our chances of getting them are way slimmer than we do the way. Then refine, refine what they send you before you get it. If you will set up a list for each one, uh, Brandon did a really good job, I think, uh, about a month ago or so when he did the, the, the webinar, and he went through and told you guys, you know, this is what you're looking for. This is how you're looking for it. These are the things. I was really proud of how he set that up because he gave you the information you needed to go forward to find the deals that you need to find. And I think that's a, an important thing is refine the realtor so what they're sending you is what you're looking for. Don't waste a lot of time. I am right now, because I've been on Facebook, are getting a lot of houses to look at that really are a waste of my time. But I'm looking at every deal right now so that I can send back to the person who sent it and say, this is why it's not a deal. And that way I can start building them and being better at what they're looking for and refine their process so they're not wasting their time either. They'll look away from things that are no good and go after things that are good. Um, David, I thought I saw him on here. Maybe I saw a different David. No, nope, he's on here. So you guys have heard me talk on a couple of the things about David. Uh, my, the guy uh, does some dump truck driving for me and has become my friend. And uh, uh, David has been very good in putting us together with some deals. He's even put us together with a place that we could do assisted living. And uh, the, the numbers in, in the area in Richmond Hill are not as strong as they need to be. But he had me put together with a piece of property for uh, about $4 million that we could have maybe walked in for 100000 or $200,000. He was very, he, he did a great job. Um, but he finds deals. And one of the deals we looked at this week, it was a uh, uh, trailer it was a whole setup of about a couple of acres, a trailer, and then a big um, workplace in the back, a, a um, garage, and a huge, a huge garage, like a like a commercial garage. And he's like, "This is what they have." Then he called back and said, "This is what they got on it, and this is just not. I don't think this is a deal. I don't think we can do anything with it." And I thought, "Very good. Now we can do something with the trailer, but the rest of it just it wasn't a good deal because the price was too high." I really like that he went from the dump truck driver interested in flipping and doing houses to one of my guys working with me actually going, hey, I can see that this is this is not going to be a deal, and let's move on. I thought that was really cool. I saw the growth of just a few short uh, months of the growth of what he's looking for. I think that's pretty cool. Um, only, only look at what you know. The realtor thinks of deals so they get paid. You know, if you did this, and you put this over there, and you added on a porch, and you did that, and all of a sudden you, you, you have been snookered by the uh, realtor and the only person who ends up in the deal making any money is that the realtor walks away with 20 grand or 10 grand or 5 grand or 8 grand and, and we walk away with nothing. I, I, I'm not for that. So don't let the realtors be the one to tell them. Take the time to do the math so that you understand it. And, and this is simple. Let me just guys just show you. I'm, I'm going to give you an example of a house and how a realtor thinks when they talk to you and then what happens when we're done. So here you go. If you uh, take a $100,000 house, and let's take 15% off of that, that sounds like a great deal. <coughs> Listen, that's $15,000. So if we get, and the realtor's going, they're asking $100,000, you're offering, you should be offering like $85,000. Well, let me show you how that looks, because this is how an $85,000 house looks. You got $85,000, closing cost is about 2%, your sale cost is about 6%, so now you got 8% in that. 5000 in repair, because you want to get top dollar and sell this thing at the very top of your game. Here's how it looks. 5000 plus 2000 plus 6000 equals 13000 And if you bought it at 85 and you're selling it at 100 you just made $2,000. Who made the most money? The realtor. 
She made six grand. She loves you. She wants you to buy another house and flip a bunch more of them for your two thousand dollars. But that's exactly how they think. They realize, man, fifteen percent off is a great deal. I don't know why you're not jumping on this. Because to flip houses, fifteen percent off is great if you're buying the house and you're going to live in it. Horrible, um, otherwise. So the realtor ends up making the most money and does the best. Make sure of your market. Here's another deal killer that ought to be for you guys. If houses are not selling, it's a deal killer. When someone, when a realtor says to you, "Well, we don't have comps in that area because none of those houses hardly ever sell," that means two things. It's the best subdivision ever, and no one wants to leave it. Or it's not that great of a subdivision, and no one wants to live in it. So people can't sell their houses, so they don't move out. Look on days on market. See how long they've been on market. Hey, this house has been on 270 days. This house has been on 195 days. This house has been on 345 days. That ought to be telling you, hey, hello, nobody wants to buy them houses. So you want to make sure that your market is good or that you have a market. Know the sales. Know where money's going. Know how it's going out. Know what's going on with that. And I think that will give you a, a huge plus. Sorry, somebody has a question. And I didn't look at it. Um, okay, good. Um, but it, it is important to know uh, what the sales are in that area so that you can so we have a lot of criteria. What some of you now, those who work with me a long time, you know this is true, and those of you that are new to our team, you haven't been allowed to do it yet, but there are areas that the the market of how we research the houses looks bad. But the person knows that this is the house that's selling. They're selling fast, and they give me proof of sales. I'll often go where, because normally your job is to find houses that are 25 percent or greater in that area. That's the house you're looking for. But if I have somebody who's proved to me, hey, you know, everybody says everybody wants 150 thousand dollar houses, but here 90 thousand dollar houses are selling like hotcakes. Can't even get one. Then we might do a ninety thousand dollar house, even though the hottest market is one hundred fifty thousand, because we've learned the market. And you say, okay, prove that to me, and you send me a list of twenty five sales in the last three months at ninety thousand dollars. That means that the websites that we research on have not caught up with that market, and that's a hot market right now. If I went to the web, some of the websites that are used out there right now, Virginia is still a hot market, and I can tell you it's not because I'm sitting on a beautiful home, totally renovated, and almost not going to get what we have in it or may, like I said at the beginning of the webinar, may lose a little money, and it sucks to be in that position, but it happens, and, and, and you don't want it to happen if you try to know the sales, know the area, research it, know what's going on, have a stronger feel uh, for, for what it is. No days on market. How long has it been there? You guys that are going out and looking for us that are guests on the webinar today, uh, whether you're on your phone or on your uh, computer, when you're going out and looking for stuff, Make sure in the area you have some idea that it's a really good selling area. There are a lot of houses for sale in bad areas. There are not always a lot of houses for sale in good areas. People want to live in the good areas. People do not want to live in the bad areas, so they sell faster, and that's what we're looking for. Know your days on market. How long are they going to be there? Why are they there? Why? Now, there might be some houses that are an exception to the rule. You might see three houses in a subdivision, and... They're 1970s and they haven't never been updated and nothing's happened to them. People aren't buying them. But then you see one that was updated and fixed up and sold in a week. That's the houses and not the market. It's important to know all those things. That's why you want to sit down with a realtor and really find out what market that you're looking at. And some of you are not spending enough time finding realtors to find the deals. And you, you really should work on being aggressive. Then if they give you comps, make sure they're apples to apples. If you're going to send me comps, let me say this in the most loving way. Why in the world do you want to be buried by me by bringing me horrible comps? When you bring me comps, say, here's a realtor said to comps, and I send them back to you going, this house is worth 30000 less than you said because your realtor's comps are horrible. Then you have to go through and do what you're going to do anyway because I'm not going to look at bad comps. So now you've got to go back and do apples with apples. Well, show me three houses in the last six months that sold in that area that, okay, well, here's two of them. Wait a minute, that one has granite countertops, all brand new, complete finished hardwood floors. It's been totally painted inside out. It's got a brand new garage door. It's got siding. They just put in brand new windows. But the, but the, but the place he's selling you, you know, 
the two of the windows have been broken in and got boards over them. Well, those aren't apples with apples. They don't have they have don't even have countertops, much less granite countertops. Then he's not giving you a good thing. Then even if there is one selling like that, and he says, "Oh, look at the market. This thing's hot." And if you do like this, we're not sure how much it costs to get it up to that position. So we've got to go back and see, know what our cost is, and know what our profit is from the very point number one, of course, uh, to do that. So it, it is really important. Okay, I think I'll take some questions, and then we'll do commercial properties. Um, in a couple of weeks. Anybody got any questions? You can go right on there and click and you can uh, ask a question if you want to and uh, I'll allow you to do that. Anybody got a question? Anybody can ask by the way. I, uh, I'll open up where anybody... I think everybody pretty much knows what we're looking for and I think feels very comfortable with these items. It's just really important that you, you, you get to this point uh, of doing them. Anyone? Check, check. Okay. I am. Uh, I'm going to do something different next time we meet. I'm going to have. Uh, I've never done this before, um, and, and 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 I have a reason for it. I think I brought one thing to you guys once before, but I have a, a couple that is doing something I think is really cool. Um, they are um, going to college kids up here in Statesboro, close to us. And ministry people, and I thought maybe I'd have him come because I know we have, we have investors on here that sometimes need to write off. We have other people that just would like to know something about someplace good to give, where you're doing a positive thing to build our future for our country, and those of you are Christians for our God. They go and help kids on the um, co college campus, and um, it's kind of like Crusades for Christ. It's called Crew, and um, it's a really good thing. And his name is Matt. Her name is Catherine Royal, and uh, so I thought maybe I. If you guys don't mind, next time we meet, I might give them 10 minutes at the end or 10 minutes at the beginning um, and just let them talk for a couple of minutes and tell them about their ministry. And if you're interested in doing something uh, for them, I thought it would be cool if our group could maybe come together and say, hey, as a group, uh, we'll support them for this amount of money and do something good for ministry. I believe um, that if you give, you receive. And I know some of you are not Christians. I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, but I think that if you would learn the, the, the gift of giving, then you should believe in karma, and it comes back to you good. And if you want to be good to people, and I never think it hurts to be good to people, I just thought it would be cool for us as a group to say uh, we all can you know, maybe pledge $5, maybe pledge $4, maybe pledge $10, whatever. Uh, maybe you pledge $20 a month and say, hey, I would, I would help this family out to go and reach college kids, not only for Christ, but to make America great again and, uh, and making a big, big difference. I think it would be really, really cool. So um, if you guys have, there you got a free commercial for like the debate or something. Did you guys see that? That was weird. Um, but if you want to be a, a part, we'd love to, you to be a part of it. So I'm going to let him come and just talk next, uh, I think it's two weeks from today. Um, also, I, I want to make sure you guys are turning in um, offers or if you're just getting information but you don't have time and this is really important right now because I want a lot of houses right now if you're getting information from your realtor but you don't have time to look at it would you please be honest and just forward it to me and myself or Tiffany or Tutu will go over it we'll go through and make the offers I won't change anything in our agreement you'll still run the project you'll still run the deal but I'll take a little bit off of you if I need to now don't do this if you're lazy if you're lazy quit wasting my time but if you've got a good search set up you know the market's good in that area, and you really want to get one, but you're just so busy right now you can't do it. If you'll just send your what the realtor's sending you for our team right now and send it to me, I'll go through them. I'll look at the houses and spend some time looking at those houses and see if we can't find one uh, to, to make your market better. I think The reason I want to do this is I think if I do one with you and you figure out how to do it, because I think some of you are not getting past the realtor stage for some reason, and if I can help you get past that realtor stage to where you figure out what to do and how to do it, you will get more excited and do two. When you've done one, you will do two. And uh, I, I think you'll you'll start to see the progression there and get more excited about it, and hopefully you can do that. Um, if you have any questions, you can always email me, Gary at thefinestplace.com or Jody um, at thefinestplace.com. You also can get a hold of Brandon Green uh, and talk with him. He's given, We've given his information out uh, all the time, and we can do that. This is the help that I really need. This is my main barrier. Good. Good. So let's see if we can't do it together and try to get you where you're doing, you know, getting to that next step because it, it seems like a lot of you are having trouble with the realtors. And I think it's because realtors are just sometimes hard to deal with. 
Tiffany had a realtor today that was just absolutely obnoxious and sent her uh, you know, a, a text at 4.30 in the morning. And uh, after she said something, he was just obnoxiously rude to her. And I really think it's sad that that's the way it is, but that's the way it is. They're just different people. Now, not all realtors are bad because my wife's a realtor, Tutu's a realtor. We've got good friends. My wife's sister is a realtor. Um, our realtor here in Savannah is like uh, superb. Tiffany's mom is a realtor. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Tiffany's mom is a realtor. And uh, she's got a horrible son-in-law. Don't hold that against her. Um, but I, I want to try to get us to the next step, you guys to the next step. Uh, and I think sometimes not understanding these realtors or not looking at your search well, I might can help you uh, get a house. Don't forget, if I help you get a house, then I get a house. you got to run it. We make some money together, and I'm happy about that. So those of you that are guests here today, I hope you get out there and start looking at some properties. you got questions. You know, if you found me on Facebook, get on there and, and uh, send me a message and say, hey, Gary, i got a question about this, or hey, here's a house, and try to do that. Some of you that are learning and that are new to our team and you're just growing, do not give up. When one or two fall through or they don't work out, do not stop, because when you get one, you'll be a force, I guarantee you, and we'll try to do it. Okay, um, any uh, information needs to be given out? Jody, are we all good? Um, I don't have anything. I'm good. Jody fell asleep already. I'm good. <laughs> How's that baby coming? Oh, good. I find out on September 10th what the gender is, so I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, not Jason? September, October. I'm sorry, October 10th. What, is, what does Jason want? A boy. He wants a football you, team. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't blame him there. What do you want? I don't care. A healthy baby. <laughs> um, there you go, girl. A healthy baby. Well, listen, I would if, if we had to do it again, and we're not, seven's enough. We're talking to seven. <laughs> but if we had to do it again, I want a girl. So because I went, girl, six boys. Boy, 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 boy. And that was it. So, okay. All right, everybody, thank you for being here. Um, Jody will be sending out information about the classes and the things we got going on, where we're going to be. I really want to encourage everybody to come to the Savannah class. I wish you would start planning now. I think it's next October or next September. I'm not sure. Uh, but Jody sent it out. She'll send it out again, uh, the new schedule for the coming year. I want everybody to come down so you can have a good time. We can go out the farm. We're going to um, have horseback riding. Um, fun around the place, just enjoying yourself, maybe ride some four-wheelers. We're going to grill. Tiffany's going to grill a whole cow. Is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Tiffany's going to grill the deer that we kill. Right. Uh, I can't get deer meat in my house or uh, squirrels. For those of you who don't, never had squirrel dumpling, don't know what you're missing, but apparently I am going to miss it the rest of my life. And, um, but uh, and she did go deer hunting with me today. If you saw on Facebook, that uh, maybe I didn't post it yet, but that's us uh, sitting in a deer stand together. But, um, uh, you guys, if, if you want to be a part of those classes, look at when they are and be there. Of course, you know if you're on the team, you paid once, you, class, you come to every class you want to for the rest of your life. But um, those that are not on the team, if you're interested in being a part of our team, we'd love to have you uh, be a part of our team. If you want to join, go through the training and do that, uh, we'd love you to be here. All right, everybody, have Gary, a great night. Gary. Oh, yes. Savannah yes. class is going to be August 25th through the 27th. August 25th through the 27th. I wish everybody on our team would start planning that now. And I'll start putting out some uh, personal letters and things to try to get everybody here. I'm going to try to give out a lot of information uh, at that time, really have you set up. And I'm going to bring in uh, our realtor. I'm going to bring in our construction guys. I'm going to bring in to, to show you what we do and who they are and, and just try to, try to go through. And hopefully at that time I have two or three houses here going. Um, and then Brandon. What? Yeah, at least if we're not, we'd be looking at a bunch. But let you see what we see and probably take, I'll take one team, Tiffany will take one team, Brandon will take one team, and we'll kind of go out and just kind of encompass the area. And I think it'd be really good. So start planning those dates right now. I just wanted to mention to you a year in advance. It ain't like you can't miss it. Um, there's uh, plenty there. So cool. Carl says he'll even be ready to come back by then. He stayed here so long. He's, uh, he's, he's going to have to stay away for a little while, but he's ready to come back by then. All right, everybody. You guys have a good evening. God bless you. Thank you for your time today, and uh, I'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot, Joey. Great job. Goodbye, everyone.